Hello, fellow birders. My name is Dennis Kania. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at the beak of the bird. Quite often I'll be approached by other birders and they need some help in identification of a bird and the bill is never mentioned at all. And it's a key component of the um, bird itself and so it's something that does require some closer observation. So let's get at it and take a closer look at the bills of birds. On the DuPage Birding Club Education Channel, we'll be discussing all things bird related. And as I mentioned today, we wanna to be mindful of the beak of the bird. I recently took a trip to the Galapagos Islands and nothing makes you focus on the bills of birds more than a trip to the Galapagos. And there's a lesson to be learned from this. So here I have an example of the ground finches that can be found. There's over a dozen uh, finches, Darwin finches, that can be seen on the Galapagos Islands. And the ground finches are just one small group of those. And as you get into each group, you'll find that um, the plumages are all very similar within those groups. So the ground finches are all very, very dark uh, on the males, maybe a little bit of white in the undertail area here. Uh, all of the females are nearly identical. If we get into the tree finches or we get into cactus finches, you find that same thing going on again and again. So here we have an example of the close-ups of all the bills of those ground finches. And you can see that the large ground finch has this massive bill where it's um, so tall from top to bottom here and forms such a flat ridge with the top of the head. The length of the bill is probably actually shorter than the height of the bill. And we get into medium ground finch and it's very, very similar. Um, still very, very wide at the base, not quite as much as what we're seeing in the large ground finch and not, um, not as short as what we saw in the large ground finch. So it's actually longer than it is tall. And then small ground finch is more typical of what we think of as finch bills and still wide at the base, but um, certainly a much smaller bill than, than what we're seeing in these two individuals. And of course, there's a lot of variability between all these birds. So it's still leaves plenty of room for debate when you're on your trip. So here we have a series of brown birds that I selected. Um, these are much closer to home. And I have an example here of a thrush. We have a brown creeper, Carolina wren. Uh, here's a fox sparrow, uh, northern water thrush representing warblers. And then we have brown thrasher. So you can see they all have plumage characteristics that might be similar in some way, but the bills are quite different. And so it is a good idea to really uh, make an accounting of, of what kind of bill we're looking at. So in the example of brown thrasher, you can see it's a longish bill uh, with a downward curve to it. Both the upper and lower mandible are curving and you can see it has kind of a blunt tip. Hermit thrush on the other hand, this bird here, does have a bend to the culmin, but you can see that the lower mandible is very straight. Again, a blunt tip. We get to this brown creeper here and you can see it's very, very narrow at the base and that narrowness goes all the way through the entire bill, all the way down to the fine tip here at the end. Carolina wrens have a very pointy tip as well, but they are heavier at the base and they do have that downward curvature both in, in both mandibles. Fox sparrow here representing finches, has a very conical bill, it's short, uh, very pointed, uh, so quite different than any of these other bills we just talked about. Northern water thrush also pointed, it's a narrower build, certainly than any of the finches that we see, um, but also comes to a fine point here. Um, and that represents what many of our warbler bills look like. Many of the photos that I'm using in this tutorial come from uh, courtesy of Mike Warner and his greatbirdspicks.com website. So you should go and check that site out. It's a great resource. And everything in here uh, that is not labeled uh, with another name comes from Mike Warner. So um, do visit his site and check it out. So here we have some of our thrushes and you can see that they do have very, very similar bills. And so that's helping us to group them in as all thrushes. And so that will help you in our identification uh, exercises. You can see, as I mentioned before, again, on that hermit thrush, you can see that the upper mandible does have some curvature to it out towards the tip and the Lower mandible is very, very straight. It does have a blunt tip. And you see that characteristic on all of these thrushes that we have as examples. 
In comparison, if I look at the wrens, we do see a downward curve to this bill, more so than what we were seeing in the thrushes. And you can see that they come to a fine tip. All of these are doing that. You can see that there's a curvature that's throughout the bill uh, in the upper, upper mandible. And you can see that that curvature is somewhat matched by some curvature in the lower mandible as well. We do have this bird that looks very similar to wrens called the brown creeper. You can see the base of the bill is very, very thin, and this bill stays thin throughout, whereas it's wider at the base on a wren and then comes out to a fine tip. You can see that here and here. So this bird is similar to a wren, but it does have you know, just a slightly different bill shape to it. So that means uh, we do have to look closely at these birds. It's something that it's not a trivial exercise to get the bill shape right. Our vireos are quite different than anything we've talked about so far. And you can see that there's curvature in both the upper and lower mandible, but they're curving towards each other. Whereas we do have a downward curve in the upper mandible. If we look at the lower mandible, we can see it's actually curving upward. And so that kind of creates a dagger shape. And if we look at the very end of the bill on all of these vireos, we'll find that there's a little hook. You can see that in, in all of these individuals. But the blunt bill, heavy at the base, uh, because of the way the two mandibles come together, it's heavy all the way out to the tip of the bill. And then again, look for that little hook. Very similar in colorations, uh, we have many warblers. And there are 35 warbler species that we have coming through DuPage County. And so this is just a small representation of those. But you can see just from these examples that they are finer build than all the vireos that we just looked at. And they don't have that hook at the end of the bill rather narrow at the base of the bill and then coming out to a fine tip. And some genuses within the uh, warblers will be even finer build. And then we have some that are heavier build, which I don't have any examples here, but if we were to look at water thrushes or prothonotary warbler, uh, Connecticut or morning warbler, they're all gonna be heavier build than any of the examples I am, am showing here. However, they are still all thin bills and typically thinner than what we were just seeing on the vireos and that shape is still going to be coming to a finer point without the hook on the end. So here are some of our blackbirds and we do have a little bit of variability in this group. Many of our blackbirds that we think of will have a heavy base coming to a very fine tip and it's a long bill. You see that represented in our Baltimore Oriole and we would see the same thing in Orchard Oriole. Both of our meadowlarks would have that kind of a bill and red-winged blackbird, yellow-headed blackbird, brewers and Rusty blackbirds would all have that kind of a bill shape. Very, very long bill, wide at the base, coming to a very, very fine tip. We have a couple other birds that are in this group that um, are not quite as long billed, but still the, the shape of the bill or structure of the bill is the same. On bobolink and brown-headed cowbirds, they're wide at the base, and they do come out to a fine tip. It's just not quite as long of a bill. And the one outlier in this group would be the common grackle, which does have a long bill that does come to a, a fairly fine point, but there is some curvature to that bill, um, particularly in the upper culmin here, you can see that uh, there's a lot of curvature going on here. There's a little bit in the lower mandible as well. So um, this one is just slightly different, but still fits more or less into this group. So by now it should be obvious that bill shape is quite important. And we have some examples of flycatchers in the top row here and some finches in the bottom row. You can see that the flycatcher bill characteristics are quite different than those of finch bills. Uh, they are wide at the base, both up and down. And then also if you were to be able to see from uh, left to right across the base of the bill, you would see that that's very wide as well. On this great crested flycatcher, you kind of get a feel for that. You can see that's very, very wide. And these birds have a wide gape because of that. And so it aids in their capturing insects on the fly. So um, it's not surprising that they would have that kind of a bill shape. And if you compare that to the finches below here, you can see that they have these conical bills that are, are shorter. And you can see that they're um, more better equipped for cracking seeds with this structure of a bill. So that's how they're going to be making their living compared to what flycatchers are doing. So uh, again, you know, as far as an identification, it's important to see, you know, what the bill looks like, but we also start to gain some insight into how these birds live when we take a closer look at the bills. So just to switch gears a little bit, we're going to look at some waterfowl and we will have some tutorials coming up where we'll have some more in-depth observations on waterfowl to share with you. But 
uh, for this uh, example of you know taking a close look at bills, just look at all of these dabbling ducks here. All these are making somewhat the same kind of living uh, on the pond. They're all dabbling, um, dipping into the water, uh, not diving under the water, and feeding on vegetation below. So you can see, even though they're all making the living the same way, there are quite a few differences in bill shapes. You know, the northern shoveler here has a large, very large spatulate bill. Compare that to American Widgeon, which has a very short bill and very straight on the upper um, edge of that bill, compared to Northern Pintail, which has a very sleek looking bill that starts out somewhat wide at the base, but does have a concave curvature to it and comes out to a finer tip. So it's a more elegant looking shape. And Mallard, I think we should all be very familiar with what Mallard bills look like. In addition to looking at the shape of the bill, it's always very important also in, in waterfowl in particular to look at how the bill comes to the base of, uh, at its base comes to the head. And so you can see that there's a very sharp forehead to this bird, um, but it does have that concave bill shape, which is quite different than this one that has also a very straight um, steep forehead that comes down to the bill, but it makes a quite a different angle between those two. So that's something to pay particular attention to. Shoveler has more of a flattened curve to it, as does mallard. Then we get into a few of our diving ducks here, and we have mergansers. We have hooded merganser and common merganser represented here, and they're not even in the, what most people think of as a duck bill. Quite different in shape and uh, characteristics. But notice just how wide at the base common merganser is compared to the tip of the bill. And when you compare that to hooded merganser, which also has a different color bill, uh, you can see the structure is quite different, but they're both mergansers. And we have one other merganser, the red-breasted merganser, that shows up that would be quite different than either of these two bills. So um, a lot of variability in merganser bills, and it's important to pay attention to, again, how thick they are at the base, how they approach the, the face, the length of the bill, um, all those structured characteristics. We get into a few other divers here. We have ruddy duck, which has quite a distinctive bill. Uh, certainly the coloration is very distinctive in being bright blue in breeding plumage. And you can see that um, very, very wide at the base. And then again, a concave curvature to a very wide flattened out bill. Um, contrasting that with any of our scoters, which are going to have a convex um, curvature to the bill more or less um, and the way it meets the face, quite different than what we're seeing here. And for comparison of two of our rusty headed um, waterfowl, you can see canvas back here and redhead here. And although you know they do have that same head color, you can see there's quite a bit of difference in the um, bill shape and how it, it meets the face. So here a very wide base to the bill, flattening out very much so and coming out to a flat tip and um, a nice slope that goes right into the forehead of the, of the bird. Whereas on redhead, we have almost a 90 degree angle here between the forehead and the, the bill and quite different in shape. So some of the key takeaways would be uh, just, it's important to note features of the bill. And it's just every bit as important as observing plumage markings. Uh, the bill can often help us figure out what family of bird we're, we're dealing with, and that will help us narrow our search through the field guide. So pay attention to bill color, its length, thickness, and curvature. Realizing the shape might give insight um, to some of the birds that we're looking at, and we'll understand better how they make a living, which in turn gives us a better understanding of bird behavior, which in turn will give us an understanding of where we might actually start to look for these birds. So thanks for taking the time to view this video. Hopefully we have given you some bird food for thought, and I hope you'll join us again in the future as we explore all things bird related.